Hello and welcome to our first class of Principles of Marketing 1, uh, DBM 12-11, these are diploma units, uh, offered at the Department of Management, School of Business and Economics. My name is Susan Yokabi, I'll be your facilitator for today. So we'll start by looking into the course outline and we look at the various topics we are supposed to look at. First to note is that we do not require any prerequisite to do this particular unit and the purpose for this course is aimed at providing the student with basic business knowledge in marketing decisions in an effort to demonstrate the skills to improve the firm's performance or the organization performance. The expected outcome, that is the expected learning outcome, uh, to explain the origin, nature, and application of marketing to organization. Also, to describe the contemporary marketing environments and explain the concept of the marketing mix. So, in the structure or the course outline, we'll be looking at the overview of marketing and we'll be looking at the definition of marketing also the historical development of marketing, differentiating marketing and selling, the core concept of marketing. Uh, we are going to understand what is marketing management and as well as understanding the challenges facing marketers or facing marketing in the 21st century. Uh, after that, the next topic will be the marketing environment. And here we define the marketing environment and we look at also the internal environment, the micro environment and the micro environment, the macro environment, and the responding and how organizations are responding to the marketing environment. Our fourth topic, the third topic, sorry, is the marketing mix elements. And here we are going to look at the four P's. So the we are going to define what is a product. We are going to understand the various levels of our product. And also, we are going to look at the PLC and define definition of price, distribution, and the type of distribution, then promotion, and then the promotional elements. We will also look at the consumer markets and we'll define the consumer behavior, the nature and the structure of the consumer markets the inferences of consumer behavior, the buying decision process, the five stages model, and the behavioral decision theory. Next, we'll be looking at the business markets and we'll differentiate the, the, the consumer market and the business market. Also, we look at the nature and the structure of the business market and the decision process of the business market, as well as the buyers, the business buyers' behavior, and the institutions and government markets. Our other topic will be marketing research, market information system, and the marketing intelligence. We are going to look at each one of those, define, understand, look at the importance of marketing research to market, the importance of marketing research, the types of marketing research, the marketing research process. Also understand what is management info, marketing information systems as well as the marketing intelligence and how we use the marketing intelligence in organization. So in this class, or this particular unit, we'll use the lecture methods and tutorials, also individual assignments, group discussions, also case studies. For evaluation, we are going to use the continuous assessment tests and the, the assignments, takeaway assignments, term papers, and the final examination. We have listed the core reading materials which can be used 
and found in our library so you can try to access as well as so many other sources in the online resource. So we start our topic today by introducing and understanding what is marketing and we are going to also check what is marketing concept and how marketing has changed over time as well as what are the marketing functions and who performs them. So marketing as a definition we can say is, a, is an organizational function and a collection of processes designed to plan for, designed to plan for, create, communicate and deliver value to their customers and to build effective customer relationships in a way that benefits the organizations and its stakeholders. So what you're saying is that marketing is not selling. So marketing involves designing processes, creating, communicating, and delivering, and delivering value to the customers, and also ensuring that you build effective relationship with those customers in a way that will benefit the organization and its stakeholders. Also, we need to note that marketing is an organizational function along with the HR, that is human resource, the finance, the production, it is say, as well as specific processes such as assembling, pricing, and promoting undertaken by an organization. So this leads to the development of product, services, and ideas, which in turn leads to the fulfillment of the organizational goals. And we know the ultimate uh, goals for most organizations are to make profits, though there are other goals also, but the ultimate is the profitability. So what we are saying is that marketing is so important that most organization ensures that we have a marketing department which is equally important with the other departments in the organization. So marketing is much more than just developing the advertising and selling a product and it's about creating value which in turn keeps customers coming back again and again. Repeat customers allows the organization to produce profits or basically to meet the organizational goals. So what we need to know is that every time the organization takes, undertakes uh, marketing, the ultimate purpose is to create value for its customers because it's through value creation that you retain the customers and it's through retaining the customers that the organization will be able to realize its organizational goals. So marketing can be applied to both tangible and intangible items such as this listed and when you look at this diagram it shows the various types of products that can be marketed. So when someone asks you what is, is marketed, basically we market this particular product. It could be the products or basically we should have indicated goods, services, people, events or activities, places or destination, ideas or courses. All those are advertised or they are marketed for people to meet, to satisfy their needs and wants. What is the marketing concept? And how has marketing changed? So the marketing concept is an organizational concept or philosophy or principle 
dedicated to understanding and fulfilling consumer needs through creating value. Again, we are saying, we mentioned that it's through creating value that the customers come back again and again, ensuring that the organization is able to realize its organizational goal. So for that reason, the marketing concept or the principle or the orientation or the philosophy is dedicated to understanding and fulfilling the customer's needs through the creation of value. Creating value for customers allow a business to develop stronger relationships and build loyalty from customers. Companies build a customer relationship through its customer relationship management activities, what we normally refer as CRM. To know which customers to build relationship with, companies need to understand the customer's lifetime value, which is the projected sales and profit a customer is expected to generate for the company. So it's not always that some companies pursue anyone. They at times pursue the people or they target the customers that they feel they'll be able to help them realize their organizational goal. So as you can see is that it's through creating the customer value that you create the customer loyalty and the customer relations. Let's look at the evolution of marketing. Marketing has evolved from a production orientation to which businesses produce the type of product that they wanted to produce, to today's relationships or marketing orientation. In the production era, there were few competitors and customers had limited information. Generating sales revenue was relatively straightforward. And Henry Ford amplified the production orientation by proclaiming buyers could have any color, any color car they wanted as long as it was black. So the Great Depression changed things drastically since there were fewer buyers in the market and ushering the era of the sales orientation. So I'm not going to dwell much on that because we are also looking at the different types of marketing philosophies or orientation as they evolved over time. So let's look at these marketing orientations. And they are also referred to as the marketing concept, the marketing philosophies, so they are one and the same thing. So we can say that there are several alternative philosophies that guide organizations in their efforts to carry out the marketing goals or the marketing objectives. So decisions about the weight, given the interest of the organization, the customers and the society needs to make by marketing need, need to be made by the marketing managers. There are five competing concepts under which the organization can conduct their marketing activities and these include the production concept, the selling concept, the product concept, number four, the marketing concept, and number five, the societal marketing concept. We are going to discuss each one of these and what it holds or what it states. And we'll start with number one, that is the production concept. And we can say that the production concept holds that Consumer will favor products that are easily available and highly affordable. Therefore, the management focuses on improving production and achieving distribution efficiency. So this, when you achieve high production efficiency and high 
uh, distribution efficiency or production efficiency, the costs uh, are lowered. Therefore, ensuring that the costs are easily available and also they are also affordable. We go to the next one, that is the selling concept. And the selling concept holds that the consumer will not buy enough of the company's products unless they are stimulated through a substantial selling and promotional effort. Here they are saying that a customer can never buy a product till they are pushed or through unless they are communicated to aggressively through uh, advertising and so on. That's the only thing that can trigger a customer to buy. So selling believes in the aggressive selling and, the, and substantial promotional efforts. We have the third one, which is the product concept. The product concept holds that consumers favor quality products that are reasonably priced and therefore retro promotional effort is required. And that consumers will favor products that offer most quality, performance, features, and features, and that the organization should therefore devote its energy to making continuous product improvement. So here you find that the organization pursuing this particular concept will only focus on continuously improving a product, but the consumer's uh, needs have not been uh, identified. They are basically doing as per their, stand, their organization standpoint. So whatever they come up with is, is do not have any input from the consumers. Then we have, uh, and this is where we find the, uh, this is what leads to what we call the uh, marketing myopia, whereby you are so short-sighted, you produce a product, you add all these features, but who is there to buy that particular feature? At the same time, maybe it becomes very expensive because it has been improved so much that it becomes very expensive. Then we have the uh, fourth one, that is the marketing management. And under marketing management, we say that the, mar the marketing concept, the marketing concept holds that achieving organizational goals depends on determining the needs and the wants of the target market and delivering the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitors do. So you'll find that in the marketing concept, it is different from the production concept, the selling concept, the product concept, because it identifies the needs of the customers and then tries to deliver the desired satisfaction to them customers better than the competitors. So the customer's needs have been met or have been considered in the marketing uh, concept. Then we go to the other one, number five, that is the societal marketing concept. The societal marketing concept. And the societal marketing concept, we can hold that the organization should determine, the organization should determine the needs and the wants and the interest of the target market. It should then deliver the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitors in a way that maintains, in a way that maintains or improves the consumer and the society's well-being. So the society, the societal marketing concept is takes into consideration the needs of the customers and tries to deliver uh, the desired satisfaction more efficiently and effectively, but at the same time ensures that the way they are doing it maintains or improves or even enhances the consumer and the society's well-being. And that's why you find that the cons the, every organization have to safeguard its society or where it's because it's, it's supposed to carry out what will appeal to them. Some of the benefits of the societal marketing is that you find 
they do not, they have, there's minimum scrutiny from the government if you are practicing societal marketing. There's also, uh, there's employee morale because they are seeing what you're doing. Because when you, you're dealing with societal marketing, you have to think about the society. You give back to the society and also you do, you take measures that safeguards the society's interest and also the consumer's interest. So whatever you're doing is ethical and for that reason it can increase the market share. Those are just some of the benefits of the of societal practicing societal marketing. So what are the functions of marketing and who performs them? So marketing functions we can say are activities performed within the organization that create value for specific products and services. Marketing functions within the organization is wide ranging, is wide ranging as it is the key link between the, the organization and the customers. The marketing department takes on the responsibility of identifying the customer's needs and requirements and then providing this information to the other internal marketing participants such as such as the other departments and the top management. So the, these are the marketing functions and the functions falls under three categories that is exchange, a physical function and the facilitating function. Under the exchange function uh, are those which promote and enable transfer of ownership of products and this include pricing, promotion, also selling, that is selling, advertising. Then we have the physical function and under physical functions allows the flow of goods from the producer to the consumer which include the, the place or distribution of the four P's. Uh, the physical function takes into account the shipping, the warehousing, and the packaging, it is same. Then we have the facilitating functions, uh, and the facilitating functions are those activities that assist in the execution of the exchange and the physical functions. Example include marketing information, processing, uh, marketing research, customer relationship management, after sales service, etc. So those are the three major functions of marketing. What is the importance of marketing? During our own time, we can find out the importance of marketing to an individual, to the organization, to an organization, to the society, and to the economy at large. But we can summarize the importance of marketing by quoting one of the management gurus, Peter Drucker, who highlighted the importance of marketing to an organization's success by stating that the business enterprise has two and only two basic functions, that is marketing and innovation. And reason B, marketing and innovation produce results. All the others are costs. So let's look at the key concept of marketing and when you're looking at the key concept of marketing we are going to look at the key words. The key words that will make uh, marketing easy to understand as a cause and also uh, when you are writing reports on marketing there are key words that need to be understood so that we are able to make the right decisions and also to communicate better. So the core marketing concept uh, we'll first by understanding the marketing again as a social and managerial process by which individuals and groups obtain what they need and want through creating, uh, offering, and exchanging products of value with others. So this concept will include needs, wants, demand, value, basically what you call customer perceived value, costs, products, satisfaction, exchange, 
marketing, transactions, markets, marketers, relationship marketing, etc. These are the core concepts of marketing. So just to understand a few of them, we may expound on defining them. And for example, the need. What is a need? A need is when you feel you lack something. So for that reason, we can define it as a state of deprivation, a state of felt deprivation of some basic satisfaction. You feel like you lack something. For example, food. When you're lacking food, you feel something is really amiss. And some of us cannot even function we, when we have that need. We have to make sure we meet, we get that need, we satisfy that need to move on. Uh, the other one is wants. Wants are satisfy, specific satisfiers. They are specific satisfiers of specific needs. They are specific satisfiers of these needs. For example, if you need food, the only way to, to satisfy if um, you are hungry, when you have hung, uh, when, when, for example, when you have, you are hungry, and that's when you need food. So the want will be the type of food you want at that particular time. For example, if you, you are hungry and you need food, so some of us will go for beans and, uh, beans and ugali. Others will go for chapati and beef. Others will go for chips and fish. No, chips and, yeah, chips and fish. Others will go for french fries, burgers, and so on. So the specific satisfiers are what we call the ones. Demands are ones for specific products backed up by or supported by the ability and the willingness to buy. For example, you only create demand if you are, have the, you, you are willing and you have the ability to buy that particular product. For example, every one of us would want to own a car, but we are only willing. But when it comes to the ability, we lack the ability. Therefore, we do not create the demand for the car. Okay? Then the other term would be, so we say market, marketers cannot create these needs, remember, and needs pre-exist. Okay? So marketers can influence wants, and this is done in combination with societal inferences. Then we have the other uh, key terms or core concept. We have exchange, transaction, and relationship marketing. And you can start by saying that exchange is the act of obtaining the desired product from someone by offering something in return. And we need to know that for exchange to take place, there are five conditions that must be satisfied, and this is at least two parties must be present. Each party must have something of value to offer the other party. Each party must be capable of communication and delivery, and each party should be free to accept or reject the offer, and each party uh, should feel or believe it is appropriate or desirable to deal with the other party. So no one should be coerced. For transaction, uh, these are the basic units of exchange. And transaction consists of trade of values between two parties. And at least two things of value, agreed upon conditions, a time of agreement, a place of agreement, etc. Then we have the relationship marketing. And this is the organizational commitment to developing and enhancing long-term mutually beneficial relationship with profitable or potentially profitable customers. So basically relationship marketing is ensuring that we form those long-term relationship with our customers and this also enhances customer retention and uh, also assists the organization in achieving the organizational goal. Then we have the markets and the marketers and then when you are talking about the market and the market are the people. In marketing, market are the people. And that's why we talk about the target market, the people who are specifically, or the group of people that specifically should be targeted for a particular, or for a particular product that are likely to buy a particular product. For example, 
young mothers. That's a target market. Maybe someone is selling uh, products that relates to children, young children, and so on. So they target the young mothers because they are likely to buy those products because they need those ones. So market consists of all potential consumers sharing a particular need or ones who might be willing and able to engage in exchange to satisfy that need or want. And marketer is anyone or someone seeking a resource that someone else is willing to offer and willing to offer something of value in exchange. Then we have the products and services. And product, we said, is anything that can be offered to satisfy a need or a want. And we said a product can take different forms, whether it's a physical good, services, events and experiences, persons, ideas, places and destinations, or even organizations. Then we have the value, which we call the perceived customer perceived value. And this is the difference between the prospective customer evaluation of all the benefits and the costs of an offering and the perceived alternative. So the customer perceived value is basically benefits versus costs. Then we have the costs, I mean the customer satisfaction, the customer satisfaction. And customer satisfaction is the degree to which a product meets or exceeds the customer's expectations. So when a customer's needs have been met, we say the, 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 the customer has been satisfied. If the needs have not been met or the product's performance is below the customer's expectations, we say the customer is dissatisfied. And for that fact, the customer will easily switch or move to another product or a competitor's product. Then we also have where we have scenarios where the product's performance or service exceeds the customer's expectations. And this is what we call that uh, we refer to as the customer delight. So at this point, you find that the customer is likely to be loyal or to do a repeat purchase again and again, and also refer others to your products and also become a, a loyal customer and to the organization. Uh, this is some of the things that most organizations strive for to ensure that their customers remain loyal. Then we have the challenges of the marketing in the 21st century. I'm not going to explain because most of them are self-explanatory. And the first one is the information technology revolution. Today, anytime you can get whatever information you need because of this revolution, then there's a rapid globalization where the, um, and then we have the changing world economy. Then there is a call for the more ethics and social responsibility, therefore increasing more costs, costing to, and expenditure for the companies. And then new marketing landscape whereby the customers uh, refer to as the king and the boss and everything should revolve around them. And then, of course, the most current uh, scenario where the global pandemic, uh, referred to as the COVID-2019. Um, having uh, then we move on to the next subtopic, which is the marketing environment. What are the components of the marketing environment? And how do these elements affect the marketing strategy? Who are, so when we, we look at the marketing environment, we need to know that no organization that live in a vacuum or operates in a vacuum, it, there are those forces and actors that influence or impact on the organization day to day performances. And therefore, we can say that marketing environment is a set of forces, some controllable and some uncontrollable, that influence the ability of a business to create value and to attract and serve customers. So we are saying there are actors or forces that are out there, and some of them are within the organization's control. That's why we are saying they are controllables, and they are those ones that the organization have no control, and they are there 
uncontrollables. Let's look at the marketing environment uh, actors and the forces. And we have the organization, and the organization itself from the diagram is always considered the internal environment. Reason being that the organization has the ability to control any force that is within themselves and to become better. For example, employees are part of an organization. So they can decide to hire or continuously uh, train their employees to improve the organization performance. They can also uh, acquire the, the best machineries in the market for efficiency of production and other factors. So that one forms the internal environment. Then we have the macro, micro, which is directly next to the organization. So it's part of the external environment, but it's directly is a direct environment to the organization. So for example, this includes the people who are dealing day to day with the organization. For example, the suppliers, the competitors, the buyers, the intermediaries, the creditors, it is same. So we can say numerous factors have influence over the firm's ability to create value for customers, including the internal, as per the diagram, and the external environment. The internal environments are elements that include the organization. The marketing department must work with the internal stakeholders, such as other departments, the top management to communicate uh, and com uh, to communicate organizational policies and information gained from the external environment. As it is often the case, department within an organization will have differing views on the type of product offered, the price they should be sold for, it is the same. So you'll find that marketing primary function lies in its connection with the external environment. So as you can see from the diagram, we have the, these ones are considered controllable, any force that is within the environment. Also the macro, you can be able to control because for example, if the suppliers are in the external, but the micro are not giving you the right raw materials or what you need to process your products, you can always change the supplier. Okay, so those are the, some of the factors that we are considering to be controllables. We have the larger environment, that is the macro environment, and this is the one we say is uncontrollable because we do not all know what tomorrow holds. Today, most of people are home because of the pandemic. This is not something we had foreseen. It's beyond us. We cannot control it. So these are the larger, we say they are, it's, it's uncontrollable. Okay. So the marketing environment, as you can see from the diagram, have two external environments. That's the micro environment and the macro environment. And the micro environment consists of the customers, the competitors, the suppliers, the partners, etc., that have influence, that influence a firm's ability to sell, to distribute, to promote and develop products and services. Each of these must be considered when making strategic decision. Then we have the macro environment. Uh, the macro environment consists of technology, political, political, social, cultural, legal, and the economic uh, environments or forces. So while outside marketing, while outside marketing's direct control, a firm must be aware of the elements in order to take advantage of the opportunities and to control for threats that result from the changes. So for example, uh, you'll find that the, the, there is what we call the SWOT analysis. This is where it's applied because when it comes to the 
the strength and the weaknesses you look within the organization. When you look at the opportunities and threats, you look at the outer, the outer or the larger organization. So the micro environment consists of the customers, suppliers, competitors, and partners, such as the channel members. Each of these players can have an influence on the organization's success in a market. To better understand the inferences, each has the management guru, the Michael Porter, developed the five force model, which is illustrated, and it's good to read further on how these forces affect the micro environment. That is the bargaining power of the customers, the bargaining power of the suppliers, the threats of the substitute product, and threats of the new entrants, and of course, the competitive rivalry within uh, an industry. Let's look at the macro environment, and we use the acronym PESTE, that is political, economic, social, technology, technological, legal, and then we have the competitive. The macro environment contains forces that are uncontrollable, but have an influence on the micro environment. For example, the economic environment. There are factors that influence the buyer's purchase ability, such as the inflation rate, the income levels, unemployment, etc. These factors influence both the business to business markets and also the consumer markets. Then we have the social cultural uh, that shape the needs and the wants of the customers or the consumers. Then we have the competitive environment, which include factors related to the number of and the potential action of the the potential action of the competitor. We also have the legal environment and involve the rules that govern business practices and include actions to protect consumers and business from unfair practices. Uh, these elements become even more complicated as companies seek to expand globally. We have also the political environment uh, that has influence in the company's domestic market in, and in the global markets. Uh, you know, the political structure, the stable political structure or unstable political structures determine so much on how the organization performance uh, will play. We have the technological environment uh, which can alter marketing due to the scientific advancement that leads to new innovations. This innovation can make entire product category obsolete, maybe within uh, two or three months or so. Uh, so that's why it's always good that the company must be in touch with the new technologies that are out there. So. Uh, briefly, we look at what are consumer markets as, and we compare them with business markets. And we can see that consumer markets are the end users of a product or service and they include individuals and households that are potential or actual buyers of a, of a product or a service. So these are the people who buy the product for their final usage. Okay, so. So in this graphic representation, you can see that uh, the, 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 just a minute, is that the consumer and the business uh, is a graphic representation of the consumer and the business market. Here, you can see the baker, the baker here, the baker purchases raw materials and then makes, that is the flour, the eggs, you see, to make bread, which he then sells in bulk to a grocery, okay? He sells in large to a grocery, and then what happens is that now you as a consumer, you'll come and purchase a single loaf. So a business, so what you're saying is that business market include individuals and organizations that are potential or actual buyers of goods and services that are used in or in support of 
the production of other products or service that are supplied to others. So as you can see, is that the business market purchase products to fill their needs, but the needs will differ than, than those of the consumer. Business purchase products to create other products or to provide services to customers. And we can say as much as we saw in the previous representation that when you buy uh, the single bread, you become the consumer. That creates the consumer market. Then we have the buying classification, the business to business uh, buying classification. We have the new task, the modifying rebuy, and the straight rebuy. So with a new task is the first type or unique purchase of a product or a service and it requires extensive effort to determining what to purchase as well as who to purchase from. Then we have modified rebuy and then here we say companies has experience with product already but is considering alternatives. Then we have the straight rebuy whereby the company reorder current product from the current vendor. So you just buy from the same person you are buying, but modified, you reconsider changing the supplier, and then the new task is where you're buying for the first time, so extensive effort is required to determine. So we now summarize that uh, consumer market and the business market with the, the, the table outline, which shows the differences between the business to business and the consumer market. So when it comes to the characteristics, we talk about demand. So the demand, uh, the business market, we have organizations are the key people who buy, and then consumer markets, we have individuals. For purchase volume, the business market buy in large when the consumer buy in small or fewer. Then the characteristic number, the number of customers, in terms of the number of customers, we have, the business markets have fewer, fewer customers, whereas the consumer markets have more, many, because they are indirect using the other channels. Then we have the nature of buying. The business market, they are professional. They use professional buying methods, while the consumer markets are more personal. Then the buying inference, you find the business markets, they are multiple and then for consumer is single. Negotiation for business market is complex and for the cost consumer market is simpler. Then leasing for business market is greater and for consumer market is lesser. Then promotional methods, uh, business market preferably use personal selling and then the consumer market they use more of advertising. That will be the lesson for today. We hope to see you next lesson. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.